Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany, welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today's topic is the cult of passive income. And no, this is not literally about a cult, but you know what I mean. Lately, my TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram have been flooded with these self-made entrepreneurs boasting their tips on how to make money, be your own boss, and become financially free. In this space online, we've seen the promotion of side hustles for a long time, but now I think the passive income ploys are the new thing. Well, they're not new, they've been around for a long time, but in this moment, pretty popular. Instead of one or maybe two measly paychecks, don't you want a dozen or more passive streams of income? Do you want to make money while you sleep? To begin, why are passive income ideas so popular right now? I don't think this will be news to any of you, but people right now are working shitty jobs for low wages, wages that are not keeping up with inflation or the cost of living. I asked my patrons about this topic and one said, you can't possibly work enough hours to make up the difference. So this dream of passive income is the only hope. We also have an absolute lack of security, long or short term. You could be fired, let go, replaced from your job at any time. The cost of housing is very high. Many people have given up on the dream of ever owning a home. Student debt is a massive crisis, as is medical debt, here in the US especially. For many, the likelihood of ever being able to retire, let alone comfortably, seems near impossible. Bottom line, we do not have a strong social safety net in the United States, so we feel like we have have to save, work, hustle, in order to secure our own futures. Nobody is going to help us do that. Our government's not gonna. So you put all these factors and others together, you've got a recipe for desperation. People just want solutions. We want to be able to hope for a better future. Whether you are deeply in debt, broke, middle class, or rich, the idea of passive income is universally appealing. It's minimum input for maximum output. So first, I wanna start by touching on MLMs. A lot of the passive income ideas that we're gonna talk about in this video sound a little MLM-y to me, which I'm sure I will continue mentioning throughout this video. So for those who don't know, MLM stands for multi-level marketing, also known as network marketing or dozens of other euphemisms. Basically, the typical MLM pitch goes like this. Hey you, do you need more money? Do you hate your job? Are you unemployed? You can join this company, be your own boss sell these wonderful products that are so good they're not even sold in stores. You have to buy them through network marketers like me. And also you can recruit people below you to be on your team. So they'll sell more things, recruit more people, and put more money in your pocket. MLMs are promoted as a low effort, easy way to make unlimited money. You can work from your couch or on the beach. I've made like $20,000 this month just by using Instagram and messaging some of my friends. I swear, it's true. I love that one minute they're telling you, this job is effortless, it's so easy. And the next they're ranting about how hard they work. It's not easy, not everyone can do this. Interesting. I made a video about MLMs a few years back and there is an entire anti-MLM community online if you're interested in hearing more. Anyway, if you were near the top of a pyramid-shaped team with lots of people in your downline, yes, you would be receiving more or less passive income. It may seem pretty passive to you, but this system requires the exploitation of lots of people beneath you. And unless you're at the very tippy top of an MLM company, guess what? You are also being exploited. Like 99% of MLM consultants do not make money. Many actually lose money in this, so don't do it. And that's what brings me to my point. Many of these passive income ideas or side hustles are predatory. They prey on people who are struggling, vulnerable, looking for a miracle. Here are my tips for making passive income. You don't have to do much work and you can make up to $50,000 in a day. Watch for part two. But despite the messaging that emphasizes how easy and passive this is, the reality is that trying to pursue passive income actually requires a lot of time, energy, and often involves involves startup costs or investments. So for the average working class person who is exhausted, broke, and overworked already, this is not very feasible. In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the most popular, most recommended passive income ideas promoted on social media and try to figure out, is any of this worth the effort? Or is all of this just a repackaged version of the classic hustle culture, get rich quick scheme? Before we continue, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. 
As you may know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of high quality, valuable classes. Whether you wanna learn something practical, maybe improve a skill for work, or something just for fun, there are endless options to choose from. In the spirit of this video, I wanted to pick some classes that are relevant to my non-monetized hobbies. First is Creative Writing for All, a 10-day journaling challenge. I haven't journaled very much in recent years, but it is very important to me. I really love processing my thoughts and feelings through journaling and also documenting all of that for my future self. And my next choice, Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space. As many of you can relate, I'm sure, I really find taking care of my plants to be a very relaxing and satisfying activity. I have improved a lot in terms of my knowledge and my ability to care for my plants, but of course there's always more to learn, and I would like to get ahead of any potential problems I might have before I'm at the point where I need to Google how to fix them, so this is going to be great. On this channel, we love learning, so if there is anything you would like to learn or would like to get inspired about, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare. Now back into the video. Step one, become a content creator. Almost every passive income video I've seen recommends start a blog, start a YouTube channel, become a content creator. And this makes sense because many of the ideas involve marketing or selling things, which are obviously a lot easier if you have a pre-existing audience. And of course, because we're watching this content on social media, the successful people telling us these ideas are themselves influencers and content creators. They've already done the hard part of getting a following. Now they can tell you what else to do. I found this video by Ali Abdal, nine passive income ideas, how I make $27,000 per week. First of all, oh my God, at that amount of money. His channel covers a lot of these topics, how to be productive, how to work efficiently, how to earn extra money. All right, so when I say passive income, I always air quote it because there is really no such thing as passive income. There is no way to make money without doing anything at all. Okay, at least he mentions that first thing. But when I say passive income, what I mean is that it's money that is not directly tied to our time. I appreciate that explanation because I think it is honest and straightforward. Passive income is all about spending an initial amount of time to work on something, then continuously earning revenue from that over time. So let's say you were to write a book. If you write a book, you publish a book, that book is now on bookshelves. You've done the work kind of once to write and publish the book, but now anytime the book sells, you make money from royalties. That is passive income. You could literally be making money while you sleep because you've created this thing which is out in the world, which is generating income for you. So let's talk about YouTube as a passive income stream. If I right now were to take a month off of making videos, I would be passively earning income from work that I already did a long time ago. But again, the process of building a YouTube channel up to the point where it can be monetized, making lots of high quality videos and gaining an audience, that is definitely not passive. Really, you're gonna be making a lot of videos for free for potentially years before you even start earning pennies. This whole idea of using YouTube as a passive income source is also heavily reliant on the almighty algorithm. As I've seen with my small channel shout outs, there are so many great channels out there making really great content that have not been picked up by the algorithm yet. Even if you are consistently making really good videos, it can still be extremely difficult to bring in viewers. And I don't say this to discourage anyone from pursuing YouTube, just if you're only looking at this as a way to make money, best of luck. But if it is a hobby, if making videos is something you enjoy, it is worth the effort, and it is possible that you could earn some income from it eventually. Anyway, the next tip that comes along with starting a blog or a YouTube channel is affiliate marketing. Some people claim to earn hundreds or even thousands of dollars per month just through sharing affiliate links. I do think this is a really nice revenue source for creators because often our audiences ask us where certain things are from. If a content creator is influencing a consumer to buy something, I think they do deserve a cut of that sale. And this doesn't just apply to like Instagrammers or YouTubers, anyone who is creating content. But this strategy can definitely go sour. For example, instead of just making good content that you want to make that's valuable to the viewers, maybe linking your shirt or the camera you used. Some content is created just for the purpose of sharing affiliate links. Have you ever read a blog post that was clearly just a ton of keywords thrown in for SEO and then the promotion of an ad or some affiliate link? Even worse, I found this TikTok for example. Best side hustle if you have no money and no experience. 
Google affiliate programs for your topic. All these companies pay you a commission to promote their products. Now go to YouTube and search related videos. Download some of these videos and create a TikTok account like this one. Upload the videos you found and place your affiliate link in the bio. Totally. Gain an audience by reposting other people's content and then just direct your audience toward your affiliate links. Honestly, this brings up the ethics of monetizing meme pages, but that's another topic for another time. Regardless, for most people, you probably won't earn a lot of money from affiliate income. Unless you're promoting a lot of links for very in-demand products, it can take a lot of effort to create all that initial content, whether it's blog posts or videos. But I guess once that is done, the affiliate income is pretty passive. Let's get into classic side hustle or passive income grinds. Classic side hustles can provide extra income. Join the gig economy, become a driver or a delivery worker. Many people do this as a full-time gig or to make ends meet, but side hustles like these are obviously limited by the number of hours you can spare in order to work. Even with a nine to five job and a side hustle on the weekends, it can still be hard to survive. So again, the appeal of passive income comes from the promise of less work work, less hours, and the potential for making more money even while you sleep. To quickly go through some other passive income hustle ideas that I've seen on a lot of these videos, one popular idea is to sell digital art like merch, Lightroom presets, templates, phone backgrounds, many possibilities. One of my patrons said, like someone who sells knitting patterns or tattoo designs or other creative content they've already made to new customers, their profit directly comes from their labor and the value they provide. And I think this is great. It's hard enough for artists to find ways to get paid. You put in the work to design something, upload it, then it could, in theory, have potentially unlimited sales. You can continue earning income from the same piece of work for a long time. However, from looking at some of these TikToks, some of these do feel pretty gimmicky to me, like just shit out a bunch of designs and upload them to a bunch of merch sites, which, you know, people buy these things. So I guess why not try? But anyway, after designing and uploading your work, the hardest part is marketing your items. If you don't have an existing following or audience or people to sell to, it might be difficult to get any sales at all, especially on these sites that are flooded with competition. Then we also have the popular method of drop shipping. Essentially, you buy wholesale products from sites like Alibaba and sell them online without any physical inventory or handling of the products yourself. I did make a video about Twitter ads where I talked a lot about those weird products that are promoted under viral tweets. Yeah, that's drop shipping. Many drop shippers, of course, use social media like Instagram or Facebook to promote their product, but the most popular platform is Amazon, of course. Feels very low effort for a decently high reward. Honestly, I'm gonna say, because I'm reminded of all those drop shipping videos I watched, so much about this makes me mad. The fact that many of these people openly put in the least amount of effort as possible. They steal people's work, they steal people's marketing materials, they just collect all this information from different places. They are never interacting with the product. They use things like undisclosed Twitter ads to promote their products. And worst of all, many of these products, because they're coming from sites like Alibaba, are extremely cheap and low quality. So then people, after like six weeks of waiting, finally receive this stupid item <laughs> that like either doesn't work or just isn't great. They probably wasted their money and now they have more trash, more waste. If you buy a poor quality product, it's likely to end up in a landfill. And these dudes, mostly dudes, some women, NBs, <laughs> drop shippers, these people are making bank off of this gleefully. And I, you know, is it perhaps my anti-capitalist spirit that makes me feel like this is wrong? Somebody's gonna be like, you can do whatever you want. Sure, you always can. Continuing on, there is a surplus of investing advice, including crypto, NFTs, Forex trading, etc. These have been everywhere, they're in the news, because yes, some people have gotten very, very rich off of them, but many, many people have lost a lot of money. And I think often it is low income or poorer people who are targeted with these strategies, especially for any new up and coming crypto coins, just like an MLM. This is your chance to get in on the ground floor. You're early. Coffeezilla has made some really great videos about these, and especially the influencers who have done some 
extremely shady shit, including allegedly pump and dump schemes. I am personally not interested in crypto or NFTs. On one hand, it's just too complicated. I do not care to learn. On the other hand, I have learned enough. I have heard from knowledgeable people about how harmful these things are, especially environmentally, like the mining of crypto, the ridiculousness of NFTs. It's just not for me. And again, I'll probably get some smart investor in the comments telling me I'm an idiot and I'm gonna lose my chance at a bunch of money. Oh well. And then when it comes to Forex trading, again, complicated, not interested. But I have seen plenty of MLM type figures promoting this, claiming to teach people how to be Forex traders. As soon as you're asking people to join your team, absolutely not. Then for more passive income investing opportunities, we have micro investing platforms like Robinhood or Webull. And to quote all personal finance content online, this is not financial advice. I personally think individual stock picking is just too risky. I know some people find it fun, but it's also extremely stressful to watch your stocks rise and fall. I personally prefer contributing to my retirement account putting some money in mutual funds, that's it. The thing about individual stock picking is, you are probably not going to discover the next Apple. So if people are telling you, this stock, you've got to invest, it's gonna blow up, that's just a major risk. If losing that amount of money is going to harm you, don't do it. But if you have money you can't afford to lose, I guess just think about it like gambling, potentially burning money for fun. Then we have the classic real estate investing. I recently made a video about dystopian real estate content and that was what inspired this video. Look at me actually making the video I asked if you guys wanted to see. Me making a part two continuation, rare. For that video, I watched way too much content, especially on TikTok about real estate investing and it did melt my brain. They all basically boil down to either one, flipping, which in my opinion sucks majorly. Please stop doing these cheap, low effort flips. Two, wholesaling. Gotta be honest, I still don't really understand this one. Hey, I wanna buy your property for $90,000. Okay, sure. Thanks. Hey, I wanna sell you a property for $120,000 that I have under contract. Hmm, looks like I can fix it up and sell for good profit. Sure, I'll buy it. Huh, so you're buying his property for $90,000 and then you're signing to him for $120,000? Yep, it's called wholesaling. I'll be making $30,000 without risking any of my own money. All I know is that these guys love showing off the big checks they get from this, from literally doing nothing but buying and then reselling a property for a higher price. Love that. Watch me lowball a seller. I do wanna just be straightforward with you um, about the $30,000 you're looking for. I mean, we'd probably have to be in the $2,500 range. Say what? That's too low. Yeah. Guys, that house that I'm trying to buy is worth less than 30,000 fully remodeled. You guys think I'm lowballing. That's actually a fair offer. It needs at least 15 to 20,000 in work. I'm offering two to 4,500. How am I supposed to make any money if I don't get it at that price? And I'm assigning it to a cash buyer. So where am I really supposed to make any margin? Again, the actual numbers don't matter. This guy is probably buying the property for let's say 2,500. He sells it to the cash buyer, they buy it for maybe 10,000. So whatever, this kid is profiting at least thousands, probably at least as much or more than the actual seller just for wholesaling. And then of course that cash buyer is going to do some cheap renovations, flip, and then sell for their max profit. So everyone in this is making more money than the person originally selling this property. And the whole crux of this wholesaling thing is that they go after run down properties. So most likely these sellers that they're targeting and preying on are people who couldn't afford to take care of their properties or were struggling financially already and are going to accept these deals because they're desperate for some kind of cash flow. Anyway, all around it's icky. He said it himself. He said he was lowballing a seller. Can you imagine seeing that on TikTok? I'd be pissed. And three, buy a property, rent it out, and become a landlord. As one of my patrons pointed out, oh, being a landlord is passive income? So you agree you don't do any work? I love that. But really though, all of these are so frustrating because people do really treat housing as something to play with something to make bank off of, rather than looking at it as an essential that everyone needs to survive. 
It's about you making your passive income and being a landlord and doing the least amount possible, investing the least amount of your money back into the property because you want to maximize your profits. So you end up fucking over your tenants who are actually paying your mortgage. And also these real estate investing tips are told as if everyone has an equal opportunity to pursue them. But you need capital in order to invest at all. You need a lot of capital in order to invest in real estate. So really lower income people tend to be exposed to more predatory, risky ideas like banking on the latest crypto coin, while richer people get to rely on more secure investments plus real estate, which is considered one of the safest investments. Rich people can afford the long game of waiting for their investments to slowly accru accrue value. Is that the term? At a point, if you have a massive portfolio of stocks, shares, real estate, it can add up to pretty substantial passive revenue. You can automate and delegate any work involved. So you're receiving most of the gains with very little effort. This is passive income, baby, and no surprise, it works best for the rich. With that, I wanna get into personal finance influencers. I will teach you how to be rich like me. The financially free lifestyle. These creators often start to gain a following as they earn more money, which helps the cycle. More viewers, more subscribers, more income, more videos about how much money they earn and how and it just continues. I recently watched this video, The Growing Problem with Personal Finance YouTuber Influencers, and I think it summarizes these points pretty well. A lot of these influencers end up sharing their personal success stories, which reels in the audience. They share their reactions to other personal finance things. They give some predictions about where you should put your money, yada yada. These aspiring mentors often hook their audience by first showing off the wealth that they have. Look how successful I am. Look how much money I make. Look how little I work. I started from the bottom, I'm just like you, and then naturally the viewers are intrigued. Maybe they do see a bit of themselves in that creator. They want that success too. They want that money, easy money. And again, this is very reminiscent of MLM stuff. It's the same messaging, you know? They hook you by talking about how much capitalism is sucking all of our souls, which, true. Being a worker is so hard. Working so many hours, I'm tired. I'm not making enough money. But then you get into the allure of being an entrepreneur. Being self-employed? Okay, that sounds good. What can I do? I've definitely seen a crossover of real estate content and these explosions exploitative self-help dude bro finance channels. They pretend they're trying to help you and they wanna give you valuable advice, but they really want something from you. They target young audiences and present an alternative to traditional paths like going to college or getting a job, working for your money. <laughs> Ew, like the pores? Instead, this content claims to teach them how to attain financial freedom and transcend the working class by becoming part of the owning class. I always thought the way to become rich and never worry about money again was to just get a good job. So I went to college, became a software engineer, and three weeks into my first job, my entire perspective changed. They laid off 25 people. There were 50 year old men walking out of their office crying because they had no clue where they were gonna get the money to pay their mortgage or pay for their kids tuition because they have no other source of income. You know, this guy has a point. It is really horrible that this can happen to people after a lifetime of hard work and dedication. We really need a social safety net. And you know, universal free public college would also be great. Medicare for all. So that's when I started learning about real estate investing. Oh no. You were almost there. When I watch this kind of content, I ask, what do these creators get out of this? If you are indeed so rich, so successful, why are you spending so much time making TikToks? Do you really want others to follow your tips, do what you did? Do you want that extra competition? And no, of course they want a social media following because that's valuable. Much of this content is not actually informative. When it's coming from grifters, it doesn't really teach you what you need to know. It's just a teaser for what they're trying to sell you. If you really wanna learn, you're gonna have to buy their ebook join their courses or coaching seminars. It's a tale as old as time. Rich guys telling you, I can tell you how to do it. You can do it if you just follow these quick and easy steps and spend $5,000 on my course. This YouTube uh, comment said it pretty well. Starting to feel like the only way to make money is to make money making videos about how to make money. Amen. Courses and coaching. These seem like the ultimate way to answer the question of how did you do it? While also using your audience to earn a buck or two. Again, to me, this ties back to something we see often in MLMs, the concept of pyramid coaching. I became rich as a coach, so I'll teach you how to become a coach and create your own courses about getting rich. 
One of my favorite things about this type of content is that it tries to strike the impossible balance between I am exceptional and aspirational, a la Rachel Hollis, but also being relatable. I was just like you. If I could do it, anyone can. Of course, you need your audience to believe they can do it too so that they'll buy your stuff and keep following you. But you've also got to stroke your own ego a bit. I mean, you're so successful. How else would people know? You've got to convince your audience that they need you as a mentor in order for them to become successful. Successful. And hold on, I just want to mention that yes, of course there are plenty of creators who do create really good courses. Courses that actually contain a lot of valuable information. There are, I'm sure, coaches who are genuinely good at coaching. I don't want to throw out the accusation that everyone who has a course or an ebook or is a coach is a scam artist. I don't want to say that. But I'm just saying there is this pattern, especially within the sphere of self-help, personal finance, where we see these creators doing a lot of the same things. And I'm sure some courses are more valuable than others and also probably more cost effective. Let's talk about FIRE. Now, what is the ultimate goal of having all of these streams of passive income? To live the dream of financial independence, retire early, AKA FIRE. It's basically a lifestyle that revolves around extreme frugality plus extreme saving and investing in order to be able to retire early, much earlier than the standard in the United States. Some of these FIRE followers save more than 50, 60, 70, 80% of their income annually. Now, hey, I totally understand wanting to free yourself from the shackles of capitalism as soon as possible or as much as possible. It might feel like if we could just survive off of passive income or very minimal work, then we are free. We can pursue whatever we want. But is FIRE really feasible for most people? The thing is, unless you've made it big and you're already coming from a career where you're a high earner, most people do not make or have the ability to save enough money to have an early retirement. Not to mention to start your own fire journey, it's best to be debt free, have a stable income and generally be able-bodied and healthy to minimize, you know, emergencies. And that can feel very impossible with the state of our higher education and healthcare systems. One of my patrons noted that their health struggles have taken away many of their most quote unquote productive working years. And also the cost of healthcare has greatly prevented their ability to save money. These are not all my thoughts on fire. I'm sure I could do a whole video on that. But I will say for those who don't mind living a super frugal life forever, basically, I'm glad that people find comfort and support in the fire community. But for many, this concept is not even a possibility. Lastly, let's talk about promoting yourself to the owning class. From what I've seen, another ultimate goal in a lot of this passive income content is to stop being a worker. Get to a point where you never have to work a regular job again. It is true. Being an owner is a much more secure, powerful, and profitable position than being a worker. But these content creators don't just want to say, own a business, like be the owner and the manager, whatever. No, the ideal situation is just owning the business and contributing as little as possible to the everyday operations. Cue automation, productivity, and boss moves. When I asked about this on Patreon, one of my patrons mentioned Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week. I'll admit I have heard about it, but I haven't read it. So sorry if any of this is misleading. From what I've seen, the whole goal of the four hour work week concept isn't to stop working altogether, but to optimize your time in order to earn the most money, get the most wealth out of the least amount of work. This focus on efficiency, time management, and outsourcing your life surrounds the concept that your labor is high value and that your time should be high value as well. And that part sounds great. Our labor is high value and time is valuable, which most people don't have nearly enough of because they're not getting paid enough of their jobs. Doesn't everyone want to escape the rat race and have more time to enjoy life, but still make a lot of money? Is it possible? As with all idealistic concepts, there are some major red flags including that point about outsourcing specifically. Ferris suggests that your time as an entrepreneur is so valuable that you should easily be able to hire someone to weed out the things you don't wanna do or worry about. Just hire a virtual assistant, someone who works across the world and earns a much lower wage. To go through all your emails, do industry research and schedule your calendar, 
then take it a step further and get all your groceries delivered and have your resources come to you. You don't have time to do unenjoyable or unprofitable things. Your time is valuable. One question though, does that same principle apply to the gig workers that you're hiring? You would hope that someone taking advantage of this four hour work week thing and hiring gig workers, outsourcing their life would hopefully be paying those gig workers very fairly and very well, but with an idea so obsessed with efficiency and increasing profits, I doubt it. This passive income realm is very closely tied to productivity, hustle culture, side hustles, work smarter, not harder. I'm not gonna be a dumb little worker earning nothing. I'm gonna be a boss, a girl boss. Anyway, on TikTok, I have seen a couple of interesting examples of becoming your own boss, like a 22 year old who bought a car wash. There's a whole genre of this, like vending machine businesses. I see your fat stacks of cash and I raise you buckets of quarters. They typically act like all you have to do is go collect your sweet, sweet profits. But of course, these businesses do require labor and expenses. But again, it's easy. Just go buy a business, hire people to do the labor, boom, you're making passive income. Go literally collect your coin. Now, if you ask me, how did say a 22 year old afford to buy a car wash? Shh, that's not the point. Just, just like hustle and work hard, believe in yourself. Final thoughts. I don't blame anyone for wanting to pursue passive income. We feel the need for having these backup plans because we don't have that social safety net. If you lose your job, how are you going to pay your bills? You're going to lose your health insurance. What are you going to do then? So this idea to have multiple streams of income is supposed to provide that individual safety net for you and your family, your loved ones. If shit ever hits the fan and one stream of your income ends or slows, you have other ways of bringing in money. That's a comforting thought. Basically, I get the appeal, but I wouldn't recommend listening to these people online who promise you that they can make you rich with three easy steps. Just buy their course on crypto investing. No, no. And now I want to give a thank you to my patrons. If you want to look at some bonus video content, polls, monthly live streams, that's all on Patreon. An extra thank you is to my executive producer tier. We have Uwu Face, Abby Hayden, Jeff, Jaden, Casey Luck, Marty Schmeichel, and VivianOladon.com. Thank you all for being patrons and thank you for watching this video. Once again, if you're interested in trying out Skillshare, learning something new, click the link in my description. First 1,000 of you will get a free one month trial. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for future internet analysis videos. Okay, thanks, bye.